Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 16th of July, 2020, Thursday of the week of Pentecost 6. The reading, C.S. Lewis, Mere Christianity, 1898-1963. We have to take reality as it comes to us. There is no good jabbering about what it ought to be like or what we should have expected it to be like. But though I cannot see why it should be so, I can tell you why I believe it so. I have explained why I have to believe that Jesus was and is God, and it seems plain as a matter of history that he taught his followers that the new life was communicated in this way. In other words, I believe it on his authority. Do not be scared by the word authority. Believing on things on authority only means believing them because you have been told them by someone you think trustworthy. 99% of the things you believe are believed on authority. I believe there's such a place as New York. I have not seen it myself. I could not prove it by abstract reasoning that there must be such a place. I believe it because reliable people have told me so. The ordinary man believes in the solar system, atoms, evolution, and the circulation of the blood on authority because the scientists say it is so. Every historical statement in the world is believed on authority. None of us has seen the Norman conquest or the defeat of the Armada. None of us could prove them by pure logic as you prove a thing in mathematics. We believe them simply because people who did see them have left writings that tell us about them, in fact, on authority. A man who jibed at authority and other things, as some people do in religion, would have to be content to know nothing all his life. Do not think I'm setting up baptism and belief and the Holy Communion as things that will do instead of your attempts to copy Christ. Your natural life is derived from your parents. That does not mean it will stay there if you do nothing about it. You can lose it by neglect, or you can drive it away by committing suicide. You have to feed it and look after it, but always remember you are not making it. You are only keeping up a life you got from someone else. In the same way a Christian can lose the Christ life which has been put into him, and he has to make efforts to keep it. But even the best Christian that ever lived is not acting on his own steam. He is only nourishing or protecting a life he could never have acquired by his own efforts. And that has practical consequences. As long as the natural life is in your body, it will do a lot toward repairing that body. Cut it up and to a point it will heal as a dead body would not. A live body is not one that never gets hurt, but one that can to some extent repair itself. In the same way, a Christian is not a man who never goes wrong, but a man who is enabled to repent and pick himself up and begin over again after each stumble. Because the Christ life is inside him repairing him all the time, enabling him to repeat in some degree the kind of voluntary death which Christ himself carried out. That is why the Christian is in a different position from other people who are trying to be good. They hope by being good to please God if there is one, or if they think there is not, at least they hope to deserve approval from good men. But the Christian thinks any good he does comes from the Christ life 
inside him. He does not think God will love us because we are good, but that God will make us good because he loves us, just as the roof of a greenhouse does not attract the sun because it is bright, but becomes bright because the sun shines on it. And let me make it quite clear that when Christians say the Christ life is in them, they do not mean something mental or moral. When they speak of being in Christ or Christ being in them, this is not simply a way of saying they're thinking about Christ or copying him. They mean that Christ is actually operating through them, that the whole mass of Christians are the physical organism through which Christ acts, that we are his fingers and muscles, the cells of his body. And perhaps that explains one or two things. It explains why this new life is spread not only by purely mental acts like belief, but by bodily acts like baptism and Holy Communion. It is not merely the spreading of an idea. It is more like an evolution, a biological or super biological fact. There is no good trying to be more spiritual than God. God never meant man to be a purely spiritual creature. That is why he uses material things like bread and wine to put the new life into us. We may think this rather crude, and unspiritual. God does not. He invented eating. He likes matter. He invented it. And by Bishop Stephen Charleston. I have been changed. That is a statement of faith I can make. I have been changed. I am not the same person I was before. Over time, over many experiences, good and bad, I have grown in understanding, awareness, and compassion. I have found a deeper sense of peace. I have come to appreciate the importance of love. Like any process of learning, I believe a teacher has been involved. I have been helped along the way, guided, nurtured. Perhaps you feel this way too. The process of spiritual change, the shaping of a soul, is a relationship. It is the endless possibility when a student connects with a teacher. Amen.